Okay. So let me now, before I go to our other two guests, let me just give you a, a sense, a lowdown of what exactly is going to happen next. Now, the touchdown has happened, the soft landing has happened, the lander is on the lunar surface. In the next few hours, the lander will open. In fact, one side of the panel of the lander will open and it will then make way for the rover to come out. So, let me just explain that process for our viewers. So, one side of the uh, panel that will unfold and then it will allow the rover to come out. It's going to conduct a series of banking procedures uh, after the landing happens so that it's in a stable position. One side opens, it creates a ramp. There's going to be a ramp between the lander and the lunar surface in a way to enable the Pragyan rover to roll out. It's a six-wheeled rover. As Akash was saying, it's lightweight. It rolls off from the lander onto the lunar surface. Pragyan will be moving at a very slow speed, at one centimeter per second, roughly. That is how slow the rover will be moving. It will scan the lunar surface of the moon. What will it look for? It will look for minerals. It will look for hydrogen. It will look for water. Remember, water has frozen there on the south side of the moon at minus 200 degrees. It will also, the rover, it has six wheels. It will leave imprints of the national emblem, the four lions, and also the logo of ISRO. So that's going to be India's imprint or India's tracks on the lunar surface. The rover will continue to communicate with the lander. The lander is still communicating with the orbiter from the previous mission, Chandrayaan-2, and they will send out data back to mission control. The rover will then provide all of that data. It's going to be on the lunar surface for one Earth day, sorry, one lunar day, which is 14 Earth days. The lander will then send all of that information, collate it, and send it back to mission control. So on that, let me ask uh, Dr. Radhakan Padi, you know, uh, people sort of try to, uh, to to try and make sense of uh, this in layman terms for our viewers as to, you know, all this information. What is it that the rover is trying to find uh, from the lunar surface and how may that information, the scientific basis of that information, how may that be useful uh, for future missions uh, as it were? Hello. Yes, Dr. Yeah. Dr. Padi. As you rightly told, there are several sensors on the on the rover, mm -hmm. and then uh, several sensors uh, will really collect a host amount of data. And if I really can recall, the, this has got an alpha particle X-ray spectrometer. It has got a laser-induced background spectroscope as well, and it also got a uh, polarimetry, something spectropolarimetry that uh, that you can study Earth. I mean, from the moon, basically. Okay. I mean, these are uh, kind of interesting sensors, and many of the sensors have been developed uh, in house in ISRO, uh, which is very nice to see it happen. Uh, so, for the next 14 days, 14 Earth days, we will have all of that information. Will this information be collated and shared with other space agencies as well? Where are we in terms of research uh, of proof of life on uh, the lunar surface? Chandrayaan 1 had indicated that there may be the presence of water, but now, how does this take that forward? Uh, well, I'm just coming back from ISRO's uh, mission control center, so it is not really 14 days, maybe we'll have 13 days. I mean, just about one day is sure. already over. Sure. Uh, also, it's a picture-perfect landing, basically. In fact, uh, the slope that uh, we estimated about 4 degrees round is uh, roughly about 5-6 degrees. And then everything went very nicely and the designated site to actual landing was within half a kilometer, within 370-400 meters basically. Okay. So it's a very nice, perfect landing that we have been waiting for. And in fact, uh, uh, we have done several uh, I mean, the improvements to the system. We mean, uh, I mean, they sort of along with uh, our, our lab as well. Okay. Uh, okay. This is what it is. But then, then coming back to your question, yes, uh, there will be a lot of uh, data collection about mineral composition of the soil about uh, you know seismic activity of the moon about you know you can just uh, put some little bit of laser beams and break down these small small stones out there and study the chemical composition like suppose it has, it has it got calcium magnesium iron whatever it is okay. and all this studies will be nicely done and through the data collected uh, from the rover as well as from the lander both of them have sensors okay captain vn Jha, uh one of the facts that we perhaps don't give enough credit for is 
that ISRO has done this at a fraction of the cost of other similar lunar missions. In fact, uh, we had this graphic uh, running through our shows that, you know, some of the biggest Hollywood movies have a budget that is far higher than what ISRO spent on the entire Chandrayaan-3 mission. It's about 600 crores or so. Uh, how may that be useful for ISRO in the future, in future missions? As well as, of course, ISRO now uh, sends into, into space satellites of other countries. So if other countries are interested in lunar missions, then ISRO could be offering them a cheap alternative. Sekar, I am actually on the moon. And I'm sure entire India, entire 1.4 billion uh, people must be feeling to be, you know, resting on the moon. And it is so amazing, you know, our scientists, especially the high performing uh, scientists, that you know, they are so humble. They do so much and speak so less. You know, this is something very unique of the uh, scientists that they have. I mean, you know, we have just heard the series of the scientists that have been, they have performed. It's marvelous. It's a great feat. And uh, especially in this particular mission, when uh, uh, ISRO uh, has done everything that was possible, you know, uh, I have been discussing at various places, people used to talk about the 18 minutes of uh, terror, 18 minutes of terror. I always, uh, you know, cut them. I said, no, it is not 18 minutes of terror. Those 18 minutes are the marvel of science that the ISRO would have put in that computer chip in that computer which is about that lander which is going to guide those 18 minutes and believe me i was just feeling that every inch of the descent that was happening those were absolute marvel of science that the isro scientists had put into this this is one area secondly now you asked me about the things that how we go from here you know there are many things right now let us get out of the shock. At least, you know, uh, I I have been a design scientist in the DRU. And a lot many times, uh, ISRO, of course, didn't come in the media to talk about as much as freely as they are talking today. But every time that we were talking about the present design of the uh, Chandrayaan 3, everyone was really talking that uh, uh, failure mode and this thing that, you know, every critical system equipment that we design we carry out this FMECA by an independent agency. This is failure, board effects, and criticality analysis by an uh, you know independent body. In our case, mostly we incorporate IIT Kharagpur. All right. Those scientists they come and do it here. I'll just take another ten seconds. So all these were known, and every time that we wondered that could this go wrong. And then we thought that it is already incorporated. So we were absolutely confident, you know, almost 100% confident that this soft landing will succeed. Okay.